Well, once again, we're going to continue on now. Uh, this is going to be Chapter 6 of Old Be Gone. And this uh, is going to talk about infrastructure. Obviously, there's going to be a lot of changes that uh, are going to come about. And we're going to have to prepare for these. And probably the biggest thing we're going to have to think about would be uh, the food chain. You know, we grow certain things around the country at certain times, and they have to be transported across country to other areas. And if we're going to be serious about it, then the electric rail system is going to probably be the way we have to go with that. And I think probably what we're going to see happening in the future is that um, more and more people are going to be growing their own vegetables, and fruit trees and things like that in order to uh, uh, relieve the strain that could develop with the food chain delivery system. It's something that we're going to really seriously have to consider. Um, I mean, this might require us to think about the possibility of uh, rebuilding our cities kind of like in the way that China's been doing. I mean, you look at how much land 10, 15 homes take up in a one-block area versus a three- or four-story high-rise with a nice, you know, 2,000-foot apartment-like or condominium type of dwelling. You know, look how much land that we have in this country that can be converted back over to growing the food that sustains our life. Um, and it would allow, you know, I'm sure we could even work in like more park systems, more recreation systems. Um, but that's if we decide we're going to do something like that. But if we keep it in the current, sit, you know, the current way, that I still I think we're going to see a return to uh, canning, storing your own food for the winter, um, and this will relieve the system if we do that. It's a little bit of hard work. I remember watching my mom can, and I mean for the month of September it was, you know, humid in our home because <laughs> she was boiling them jars in that pressure cooker and. Next thing you know, she's got her ear like this as she's trying to hear those little <sniffs> as those cans start popping, as that paraffin pops up, uh, telling her that, hey, you were successful in your canning, you know. I still remember those days. They were fun. Uh, so I think that's how we can take, you know, we might see a return to that. That's why I mentioned earlier that the family structure might change to where, you know, women find themselves more in the home and it doesn't necessarily have to be a woman I guess a man could do it too taking care of the children, whatever, it could be a role reversal but um, you know, the old ways are going to become the new ways and like I said, it's hard for us to conceive right now uh, we don't need to think about that but when it comes to the delivery of the food system to this country, it's going to be an issue, I think. I don't know necessarily, well, I don't, <laughs> I don't think necessarily that we're going to be seeing, you know, people with pigs and cows in their house, you know, I don't think that. we got an open plain system out there like Texas and other places, and they provide us with all the meat we need. Luckily, even with the rail system moving I don't want to say as slowly as it does, but, you know, by the time you get to transferring and all that kind of stuff, you know, you, you know you're going to need to freeze the food. There's not going to be any of this fresh stuff that you see. Of course, you may see more things like uh, like the old meat stores kicking up all over the place, too, though, where it, it, it's going to be different. It's going to be... A different lifestyle for the people in the future in a world without oil. I kind of regret not being able to see that because I think it would be a fascinating thing to view. 
So, you know, when you look at uh, not only the food chain, but if you look at, say, businesses, you know, right now you got businesses that are online businesses that ship all over the country. Well, unless you want to wait a longer time period, I don't think uh, those businesses are really going to be practical. I, I got a feeling you're going to see more along the lines of the old, as they say, brick and mortar type stores kicking in. And if you're one of these uh, systems that do, you know, where you order online and have something shipped, it might be one of those things where you could still go to a website and order something online, but you're going to go pick it up. And that's where the distribution system comes into play. I mean, it's, I don't know what kind of hassle it's going to become in the future to deliver stuff around this country. Uh, but when we're relying solely on an electrical rail system for a lot of the things, you know, we're going to be seeing uh, furniture manufacturers popping up all over the country. We're going to see textile mills kicking up all over the country again. <clears throat> I wouldn't be surprised to find that uh, all of our TVs and stereos and the cell phones and a lot of the other things that we have manufactured overseas right now, I got a feeling in a world without oil, all of that's going to come back home. So, you know, there's going to be plenty of work. <laughs> It's just going to be so interesting to see. I mean, it's I would just kind of like to be there for that. But um, there's a few other things that we should probably think about when it comes to infrastructure. And I think uh, possibly one of the biggest things that we can do, especially in what I would call the older cities, is that we should get all of our power lines underground. Okay. If we have a natural disaster or a tornado come through or something like that, you know, the resources needed to go through and rebuild or reinstall or whatever it is we're going to do with the power lines, you know, it's going to be pretty costly. I mean, a lot of, um, a lot of, well, it's been brought in the past where people have mentioned that this should be done, that we should get our lines underground. And granted, newer subdivisions have done that. That's great. I'm glad. That's, that's wonderful. Um, but in the older cities, we still got telephone poles all over the dang place. And it's just something that uh, we should concentrate on doing. A lot of the power companies, oh, it would be too expensive to do. Well, in a world without oil, what kind of expense do you think you're going to have then in trying to reinstall and redo all these things? Just getting a telephone pole from point A to point B is going to be a hassle. I mean, don't be surprised if you're using a horse-drawn cart to do that. Sounds kind of <laughs> funny to say that. But like I say, we don't know what that world's going to be like. It's, going to, it's hard for us to conceptualize that world. We can't say definitively that that's not a possibility. Just like I can't say that it's going to be something that happens. It's just a possibility. Uh, how are you going to get a telephone pole on an electric, you know, inner city transport system? Are you going to do run a trailer behind it? <laughs> I mean, uh, it just, like I say, it's going to be an interesting world. But that's something that we should really start thinking about doing. Is getting our power lines underground. Uh, I think that's going to be a huge, huge benefit to society in the future to have that done. And I believe we should get started on that. Another thing that I was considering is that uh, right now we really are kind of half-assing recycling in this country. And I think one of the things that we need to do is make the word landfill a thing of the past. We should get a much better recycling effort started in our cities. Japan does a wonderful job of that. We should study their system and 
find a way to make it work here. Um, take an example here, I, place where I live, I don't got any recycling here. I throw all my trash away and it goes to a dump. Bottles, cans, plastic containers, everything can be recycled. There should be no need for landfills. Period. You know, there should be no need for a landfill. And I think in the future, we're going to have to uh, really make that a concerted effort, uh, especially in the cities. You know, I mean, landfills take up a lot of space. I can think of one of the ones in, where I grew up in Louisville. <laughs> I mean, you know, this distance keeps getting bigger and bigger and bigger every time. I go home, the landfill's just bigger and bigger and bigger. And my thought is, why are we dumping stuff in there? You know, right now we take a couch and we throw it into the landfill. Well, why not break that couch down? You know, take that couch and rip it apart. Take the springs out, smelt the springs down. Take the wood that's in there, anything that can be reused someplace else. You know, start a reusable... Uh, wood store as a city and sell that old wood off to people. I mean, we build stuff all the time, all day long. So if you get a two by four or, a, you know, it's two, three feet long and construction places can use it, then, you know, recycle it. You know, same with like refrigerators and the like, uh, stoves, everything. I mean, we should not have landfills in this country. They should disappear. And something you can do as an individual to help help these landfills, um, if you're a homeowner, you can't really do it, I guess, if you're a, an apartment dweller. But like here where I live, when I cut up vegetables and stuff like that, you know, you always have refuse. And what I do is instead of throwing it in the garbage, I throw it out in the yard. I let it decompose naturally. Doesn't stink. Everybody thinks it would probably stink, but you know, it doesn't. It, uh, matter of fact, we've got some wild rabbits around. I've noticed some of that food gets eaten. <laughs> so maybe you got a wild rabbit around there. If not, get you a tame one and let him eat it, you know. Um, but, you know, these are the kind of things that we have to think about now because that would help people in the future. It doesn't sound like much, but. By recycling, we use up less natural resources. And that means we're going to be able to push our natural resources further out. Maybe come up with a standardized jar system for like, uh, um, you know, peanut butter and mayonnaise and stuff like that that we get off the shelves. And what I mean by standardized, I'm talking about the design of the glass itself. You know, just... Use the old mason jar system, <laughs> basically, in a way. Mason jars came in several different sizes, and that becomes the new size for, you know, our grocery products. And it would aid us in our recycling because uh, instead of having to resmelt all those jars, they can just be autoclaved, or not autoclaved, but steam clean, purified, however you want to say it, and reused. I mean, think about it. It's easier to wash up and reuse it than buy something new and throw it away. It'd be like eating off paper plates instead of washing dishes. Currently, that's what I do. I must admit that. <laughs> Sorry. That's just the way it is there. Uh, but uh, that would be a perfect example, using disposable bowls and plates versus washing your bowls and plates in the dish and you know the dishwasher or you don't use a dishwasher like me and scrub them by hand so it's these kind of things that we can think about doing um, on a personal level not not something that needs to become a mandation by the federal government we don't need their noses stuck in this I mean Naturally, in order to build nuclear power plants, we'll have to have them in there. And 
to build an electric rail system, yeah, we're going to have to have them in there, but only as directions, not necessarily running them. The less federal government we have in our lives, the better it's going to be. And truthfully, in the future, it's going to be hard for the federal government to even get into our lives because it's going to be harder to get things done. You know, you can't, not going to be able to, oh, let's get this, let's get these guys over here tomorrow and then send them over here the next day and send them over here the next day to monitor stuff. It's not going to be able to be done. I don't know how the world's going to be in the future, but uh, our infrastructure is going to change. And however it's done, you know, good luck to you. That's about all I can say on that. Take care.